Hey, hey, and welcome back to Trady Business School, the podcast where we have real conversations and share practical advice and tips on how you can run your trades or contracting business more enjoyably, profitably, and have some more fun along the way. Today, I'm going to be talking about the secret to growing a profitable business. My name is Miranda Hill, and welcome. I'm going to have a chat to you about how you can achieve your goals by thinking better today. I'm going to share a model uh, that will help you do this. You may have heard of it, you may not. Either way, I'm sure that listening to this again is just what you need to help uh, draw your attention to ways in which you could think better to get the results that you want and deserve. So this is... Uh, a conversation because you have made a decision to run a business, right? You've made a decision to run a business to serve your clients as best you can, to serve them in an outstanding manner, to be the best manager of your staff and team, to not be mediocre, to not be beige, to not be average. No one aspires to that. You are all seeking to add the greatest level of value to your business, to your clients, and to your teams. And you deserve the chance to unlock your abilities, uh, to unlock the possibility for you to achieve your goals and success, whatever that may be. Now, uh, I was having an amazing conversation, in fact, uh, just yesterday with one of my private clients about this, and I said, I've got to talk to Trady Business School about this because this applies to all people everywhere, myself included. We all face challenges in our lives, business ownership especially. We all face challenges in business. It's business. You know, no person has it all together. Nobody has their shit together, despite the facade that they may put up. You know, the business, the business that, say, across the industry lot from you that always seems to be booming with uh, looking like they're making a profit, you really do not know what their profit and loss is saying. You don't know. You don't know whether the clients they're serving is profit. You do not know whether or not they are you know, running uh, invoice to invoice, bill to bill, month to month. Your journey as a business owner is a journey of constant growth. It has to be. It must be. Uh, Whether you're enjoying it or not, you are constantly growing. You're constantly stretching and you are constantly facing new challenges. I mean, goodness, just think of the last couple of years and the challenges that is thrown up for business owners. The good news is, though, that every single one of us has got the opportunity to learn new ways of thinking that will afford us better chance of achieving our dreams, of achieving our goals and achieving the successes that that we want. Uh, That profitable business, that time off, the uh, desire to not have your business be uh, shackled to you morning, noon and night. To be able to step away and breathe and know that it will not collapse in a flaming heap if you turn your back on it. We all deserve the chance to improve our results, uh, to improve the results that our teams achieve and to improve the results that you achieve for your clients. But, you know, in the beginning, uh, wherever you are at in business and whether you've set your goals ages ago or just today or you're thinking, oh, shit, maybe I need to set myself a goal. In the beginning, there is always a gap between where we are now and where we want to be. And that gap may be in awareness. You may not know what you're not aware of. Maybe a gap in your competence or skill level. It may be a, ge- a gap in, well, just the how-tos. What do I need to do to get there? It may be some other kind of gap. It can often feel perhaps overwhelming or difficult or challenging. I know uh, many of our clients face difficulties and challenges uh, a lot of the time. It's business. It's really, really important to realize, though, that these challenges are not a reflection of our capacity, but rather a reflection of our current experience and a reflection of our thinking. That's the key, a reflection of our thinking. So whatever the limitation we may be experiencing is directly related to how we're perceiving the experience through the filters of our awareness. 
as human beings, we are meaning making machines in a meaningless world. We filter our experiences. Every single one of you out there is a filter and you, you filter every experience that happens outside of you. You filter it through and you create meaning from it. And that meaning is unique to you. Nobody else will have the same meaning, even if they are standing right next to you. Um, have you ever noticed occasionally that uh, you both watch, two of you or you and somebody else watch the same event and what you see is different? Perhaps you watch a movie and you both notice different things in that movie, things that neither of you saw. You take a different message from the movie. So those are all examples of how we filter our worlds. We all do it. So in what above the line and below the line does, I'm going to talk a little bit about above the line and below the line. It's a model. Uh, you may have heard about it before. If you have, stick with me. Um, I may describe it to you in a different way. If you haven't, then also stick with me because this will be, it'll be, it'll be a game changer, pun intended. A game changer. I know that every time I've worked with this with any clients within Trady Business School uh, or you know other private clients, that it it it's something that they go, wow, okay, I I'm now I'm seeing my world in a different way. I'm seeing the choices I'm making in a different way. I'm seeing how my team members are reacting in a different way, and I'm thinking of different ways that I could manage things. So what it does is it's a model uh, above the line or below the line, and it enables us to hold a comparison against the model, a uh, comparison against um, how we are responding in any moment uh, against the model, and it's a proven structure to deliver resourceful outcomes, to deliver the thing that we desire or want that's positive and not uh, negative. Yeah, it's been said, I think it was Einstein, um, forgive me if I'm wrong, but the quote is really what I wanted to share with you. And that's something like, uh, problems cannot be solved with the same level of awareness that created them. And this is really a, a, a way, I suppose another way of saying this is that we can't solve our problems with the same kind of thinking that we use to create them. We cannot solve our problems with the same kind of thinking that we use to create them. You know, there must be and there has to be a more resourceful way, a better way of approaching the problem or challenge to solve it. It has to be. And above the line and below the line, this model, it will allow us an opportunity to, I guess, reference our thinking, to compare our thinking or response against our desired outcome or not. So we can think, are we getting the thing? Are we achieving or heading towards the goal or outcome we want? And if we're not, what's another way of thinking about it? or what could be possibly some of my blocks. So what is above the line and below the line? Well, it's a model that is commonly referred to when we look at fixed and growth mindsets. You might've heard of fixed or growth mindsets. When we look at how, it's a way in which we look at how people navigate the world around them, how they accomplish the results, or perhaps how they are restricted in their ability to achieve the outcomes or results that they say that they want. That's when we see this model at play. What it isn't is limited to one area of life. It's universally applicable across all areas of life within relationships with yourself, relationships with others, your own personal awareness, your business, your teams, any area of life. It is a universal model. Beautiful to use in a business though, especially when you're looking at how to manage your teams better and how even for yourself to look at how am I showing up every day in a way that is helping me to achieve my goals. If I'm not achieving my goals, then why not? This is one lens that you could put on to think about and have a look at why you may not be moving forward at the speed pace or in the direction of your goals. So below the line, below the line is commonly seen in blame and excuses and justification. It's when a person finds themselves lost in their story. Um, some, you might've heard the saying, we often say at effect. And what I mean by that is that their world is happening to them. It is and the world is happening to them. They seem to always be struggling with time and money and resources. They're kind of like that lack person. 
that person that's always struggling and things are, it's, it's the opposite of abundance. It's lack, it's problem. They hold a set of beliefs that wed them to that thinking. And as a result of holding those beliefs, they become easily overwhelmed. They become really and quite defensive. They're closed. And it's often because of that defensive nature that they're so committed to being right and not in terms of being factually correct or right, not in terms of getting a great outcome. They're committed to being right, committed to defending their perspective, defending their beliefs and proving their point, even though it is very much restricting their ability to move forward. Now, I was talking with a client last week and with every opportunity or every uh, every opportunity or possibility that I raised, it was, yeah, but the problem with that is he was below the line all of the time. It was a constant, yeah, the problem with that is, oh, yeah, I can't do that because. So if you've, I'm sure you have encountered someone like that, uh, somebody in your life at some stage. So some of the things that you um, will notice in below the line is blame, excuse, denial, staying stuck, doing nothing, inaction, being a victim, um, blocking of themselves and others. They see problems just like that client I just spoke about. They will feel like they have no control. Uh, it's happening to them. They find fault. They nitpick and they see failure, perceive failure in themselves. They see failure happening. They catastrophize everything. So that's the below the line. Above the line, on the other hand, is all about ownership. It's all about accountability. It's all about responsibility. Above the line shows up in somebody by them being really open, openly curious, they're transparent, they're really committed to learning. They are all about questioning their beliefs. Where they, wow, what am I not aware of? Wow, okay, that's a belief I've held. I'm going to question that belief. Is it serving me? They're playful and open and really present to the moment, present to uh, yeah, finding answers to things and, and, and curious about it. Often what you'll see uh, when you meet someone who is living and behaving above the line is someone who makes decisions uh, quickly, um, they will own things, they uh, have hope, they see possibility, they solve things, they're problem solvers, they take responsibility as we just mentioned, they're really into finding a better way. So even if something's being done really well, so well, is there a better way of doing this? Is there another way of doing this? What's possible here? The, the typical of what I often see in trades ad is the can-do attitude, which I think is a term that gets thrown around all the time in job ads. Must have a can-do attitude, but really what is a can-do attitude? And I know you know it when you see it. It's just very common to write in a job ad. And honestly, I don't think anyone's going to show up and go, well, I, I have the opposite of a can-do attitude. I've got a can't-do attitude. Can I still apply? Above the line is someone who seeks, seeks feedback and loves to provide constructive feedback. They take accountability and they take action. So that's above the line. So how does it all work then? Uh, so if our, think about this for a moment. If our beliefs determine our decisions and our decisions determine our actions and our actions determine our outcomes, then the level of ownership that we have around our beliefs for any situation, the level of accountability that we take around any situation, and the level of responsibility that we're willing to take around any situation is going to determine the types of and the quality of the decision that we make. The quality of the decision we make is key there. Because if we are making high quality decisions, then our high quality decisions will provide us with high quality actions. And because we're taking high quality actions, we're going to achieve high quality outcomes. We're going to grow and go from strength to strength. Think of it uh, now through the opposite. It's also true. If the quality of our beliefs were to be or are locked up in defensiveness, are locked up in blame and are locked up in uh, excuses and locked up in justification, then our decisions are going to be low quality. 
And because they're low quality, we're going to and likely to take low quality actions, which will lead to low quality outcomes. And none of you out there listening, wherever you are, are out there to seek low quality outcomes. Shit results. It's not what you're out there for. So I wonder if any of you are wondering as you're listening to this going, oh, okay, right, I get it, right, above the line, good idea, good idea, Miranda, that's where I'm going to play. But why does this happen? Like why, why do people do this? I know a few of you like those answers, so I'll share with you briefly. It's really important to understand um, the difference between, I think, you know, Barry and I have talked about it before, the critter brain, uh, the reptilian brain that was formed when we were living in caves back when um, being and going below the line was really, really useful because it was designed for the purpose of survival back there when we needed to be able to recognize the threat and respond. Uh, that threat needed to trigger a response that allowed us to move away from that threat. You know, back when there uh, were saber-toothed tigers, you know, it's just not useful these days, though. Um, there, back then, there were saber-toothed tigers as well as threats to identity and ego. However, now there are no tigers. There are just threats to identity and ego, and that's where below the line still comes in. Our unconscious mind has no idea that it's 2022. It has no idea and doesn't know the difference between our, the chemical reaction that happens in our body. I think there's a hormonal release. It does not know the difference. The, re, the, the chemical reaction in our body when we fear something, we recognize a threat, is exactly the same for a threat to our ego or, or our identity as it is to um, you know that tiger that's trying to kill us. So what our unconscious mind does is hijacks our capacity to think critically and rationally and creatively, and it restricts us to a default that's like that fear, fright, uh, or freeze response. So you've heard of fight or flight, and that's why that all exists. It's like this default position. So we have got to work really hard at overriding this as human beings now living in this modern world. If we drop below the, low, below the line and those are our responses, our outcomes will be restricted to below the line, low quality outcomes. The thing is now, though, that as you've all heard me talk about this, you have conscious awareness now. You know about it. You're aware of above the line or below the line. You're a bear aware of why this all happens. So now you have the ability to make different choices, to make a choice about where you choose to play above or below. And if you do choose that to live um, and play above the line, your brain will then begin to access the left and the right brains, the logical and creative areas and enable you to come up with solutions um, about opportunities that are available to be able to solve problems that you face. And it's a little bit like it's a muscle that you have to build. So the more time you spend above the line, the more you build that muscle. So you have to practice it and keep at it. And if you know that there's a habit of yours to slip below the line, and it may not be all the time, it may be in certain situations, just notice in, in areas of your life where you go, wow, okay, I tend to drop below the line when I have conversations with this person, or I tend to drop below the line when um, I've got a lot on and I have a really stressful week. Just notice that. And those are times to make different choices. It's all a choice. Because if we make that choice and start building that muscle, the result is that now that we're accessing both sides of our brain in a resourceful, functional way, we will begin to start to experience high quality outcomes. We have to. And this will build incrementally, win after win after win. So we can choose to exist above the line or below the line. It's a choice we all have. No one is ex the exception. We can all choose this to live above the line. And if you do choose to live above the line, then your life will change as a consequence. Your business will change as a consequence. Your relationships will change. The people around you will begin to respond to you differently because you're choosing to exist above the line. So the simplest way to do this is to ask the question before you respond, is this above the line or below the line? Count to five. Mel, Mel Robbins has got the five second rule to take action. Count to five, take action. Let's apply the five second rule here to instead of reacting, you respond above the line. So 
event happens, thing happens, you have a moment to make a choice. Count to five, choose to respond from above the line. Ask yourself, is this above the line or below the line? There is always a moment in time where you have the choice how, whether to react or respond. Your world will reflect back at you who you are being. Your world is your mirror. It's an extremely powerful question to ask that will help you to determine the results that you achieve in your business. It's that simple. So where do you choose to exist? I think I know the answer. I can think I can hear all of the echoes of all you in your cars, everywhere you're used, sitting at work, running down the road, going above the line. Of course, Miranda, for goodness sakes, why, who, who in their right mind would go, no, I choose to live below the line. Believe me, there are people that do choose to live below the line. However, I know it's not any of you. And often those that are there um, often don't have full awareness of what they're doing or they're so stuck and wedded to their story. It's so entwined with who they are that they don't know a better way and it frankly it terrifies them to do anything else. However, as a business owner, if you are committed to changing uh, your business, to getting better results, to having more positive outcomes, to achieving the freedom and the time off that you want so much, then you must choose to live about below the line. And if you're still listening, I would say you're one of those business owners. You must take responsibility for the outcomes that you get or don't get and start building the muscle to live above the line more consistently. And as you do, you will build trust in yourself to get the outcomes that you most want from your business, to get the outcomes and the results that you most want for your world uh, as a result of having a profitable business. So there we have it, above the line, below the line. I have had a ball sharing this with you today. I know that it is something uh, that is so relevant to everybody everywhere. So if you've loved this episode, please share it with uh, friends, with family, uh, with other business owners, anyone you think might be interested in it. You know that uh, you're listening to this is going to benefit them. If you haven't already joined free Facebook group, which is called Tradies and General Contractors Global, then pop on Facebook, have a quick look and jump on in there. It's free. Uh, there is lots of new content and things in there and join the community of other like-minded business owners. So that is all for today. Uh, thank you for listening and I will see you all next time. Bye-bye.